Ladies and gentlemen, Jeffrey Candeloro. Thank you very much. Good evening. Okay, so the one thing that everybody in this room, everybody in the city, everybody in the country has in common is that we are subject to governance in this country. Regulation, legislation, bylaws, it affects just about everything you do in your life. We're all subject to it. Yet, here in Australia, most governance, most governments that we, governance we're exposed to is geographically based. Which state you're in, which jurisdiction, which electorate, which police command, who maintains the road you're driving on at the moment, it's all geographically based. Yet, it's really hard to find out where you actually are in relation to government. Here in Australia, we have a representative democracy, for those who don't know. It's based around <laughs> electorates. We, uh, we elect people to represent us in the various parliaments and chambers across the country. As an aside, um, there are approximately 580, this is about to come up, 580 elected chambers in Australia. That's all the Houses of Parliaments and all the local councils in the country. Approximately, conservatively, 4,500 elected uh, representatives, which is roughly one for every 5,000, 4,900 or so citizens. And you can't get an easy solution to find out who your representatives are based on where you currently live. So faced with this problem, we decided to have a look at it and see if it could be solved. Early last year, we had the proverbial perfect storm, and that's Hurricane Katrina, Kat Katarina, sorry. Um, we had a technologist interested in politics, myself, who suddenly found himself with some extra time on his hands, thanks to strange management decisions. Um, <laughs> we had an interesting problem, an interesting technical problem. Um, so the thing to be aware of when you start a new service, originally we were gonna call this Who Represents Me, then we wrote it down. <laughs> Always write down the domain name before you do it, okay? can end in tears. So instead we called it myrepresentatives.org. This is the initial version that you saw. Very much a prototype. You put in your address, 20, 30 seconds later, it'll tell you who your state and federal representatives were uh, and which state and federal electorates you were in. Very much a prototype, proof of concept, but we proved the concept worked and it was solvable. At the same time, this perfect storm was growing and there were other open government activities around the country, including Open Australia, a wonderful, wonderful, amazing website you, everybody should check out when they leave, not during any more talks. Um, otherwise, there'll be a none. And um, they're doing wonderful things for our democracy. At the, or mid last year, the Australian government formed the Government 2.0 Task Force, whose part of their mandate was to look at governance issues and open governance issues in Australia. They, in turn, established the Mashup Australia competition, of which that's one of the very cool trophies. Um, we were fortunate enough to win second prize, actually. Um, like most Mashup competitions, it was about taking open government data, in this case, and making new services out of that. With all this going on, and because we thought this was actually was a really interesting problem, we decided to develop my representatives further and developed it into geo2gov. geo2gov.com.au, you can check it out now if you want. You go there, you put in a street address, a location, IP address, all sorts of things, it will tell you. State, local, federal, um, districts of electorates or regions that you're in, who your representatives are. What we are looking to build, though, is not a pretty website. If you go to geo2gov, it's not pretty. We're looking to build infrastructure, a piece of infrastructure for the Gov 2.0, uh, web services and services that are being built. At the moment, there are services out there, uh, including one by one of the people in the front row, I think, that actually use Geo2Gov um, as a web service. So now that we've solved the first problem, the first layer of problems about the uh, representative democracy, what else can you do once you know where you are in relation to government? Well, one of the very first ones we're thinking about is voting. Every three to four years is an election that you have to attend and vote at. Wouldn't it be really useful if you could automatically know which electorate you're in, who the candidates are, where the nearest polling place is, how to get there by driving public transport, walking? We can start to do this sort of information as it becomes available. Disasters, emergencies. On the weekend, we had tsunami warnings. We have bushfires, floods, earthquakes here as well. Again, knowing where you are, we can get this information to you. Uh, I think the New South Wales Rural Fire Service already pushes out some information as GORSS uh, about fires and all sorts of interesting things. Um, this is Know Where You Live. They actually won the competition. Um, this is displaying census data. If you go to geo2gov, um, geo it will actually tell you which census districts you're in, and you can cross that against the census to find out the 200 properties around where you are at the moment, how they're made up. This is a heat map of crime rates in, New in Sydney LGA based on the specific location across 2008, across a variety of crime stats. Um, we saw earlier a crime map broken down by large region. This is down to the street level. For those of you who don't know, public schools in New South Wales have catchment areas. If you're in the right catchment area, you go to a particular school. What happens if the catchment area information is easily available to parents when they go to buy a house on opposite sides of the street? 
the good school and the bad school, will that start to affect property prices? Fundamentally, though, what we need to make available to drive all of this is open data. We need the government to release the data that they've got, that they're compiling, that they're using, just so that people can use it and build further services. And take part in your democracy. 